yeah. Barbie's vlog, right? Trying to get it to be as successful as Barbie's vlog. I don't know. Barbie's What's vlog up? isn't that successful. <laughs> Barbie's vlog isn't that successful. Well, isn't it now after she met the princess and they traded places for a little while? Yes. Barbie's really good, and I really like this Barbie vlog show that they have. Hey, welcome back to my vlog. Today is all about French macrons. If you have a kid who likes Barbie, these Barbie shows on Netflix are really good. Today, happy Sunday. And Barbie is a sponsor. Just kidding, Barbie. Barbie is a sponsor? Sure, let's do it. Okay. Happy Sunday, September 6th. Today is... Nothing is day. It's kind of a weird day today. It's Pet Rock day. day. Pet Rock Day. Do you know what a pet rock is? You never heard of a pet rock? It's a pet rock. There was legitimately a pet rock in 1975. In September, this guy launched the pet rock. You could buy it for like five dollars in a box. Tomorrow when we see this video, are you gonna like put, put a picture? I will put a pic definitely. Picture. Yep, here's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary Dahl, he was an advertising executive, and one day, I think he was at a bar chatting with friends, and he re and all of his friends were complaining about their pets, how much care it took. So he came up with this weird idea, well, what would be the greatest pet? A rock. You don't do anything, they just sit there. So he actually got rocks, put them in these beautiful boxes with this manual, this like how to take care of your rock and train your rock manual, and he sold them for like $5. And he was even on like the Tonight Show twice that holiday season. He sold tens of thousands of these rocks, maybe hundreds of thousands of these rocks. He made. I want to be on the Tonight Show a hundred times every single day. You want to be on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon? I know you do. I know. Maybe one day. Jimmy. Are you out there? Are you watching? Gary Dahl made millions selling pet rocks. And Gary Dahl also then went on to do other things. Like, not everything was successful. He tried some other projects. They tried to relaunch, I think, the pet rock. It, it only lasted about six months when it was like, kind of popular. How did he relaunch it? You do like, oh, here's the anniversary edition. You might make the box a little fancier. Some, some people tried to relaunch things. And nothing ever really worked. Just that time in 1975 for like six months was it ever anything. But then he did some other stuff. Gary Dahl is the the person who wrote Advertising for Dummies, which I think is still kind of a pretty well-read book on advertising. He, I think he started a consulting company, helped other people launch products. The reminder though, the kind of the story of the day, I think, is some, a couple things. One, Gary Dahl came up with this idea at a bar and he immediately implemented it. Like he was on it. Right? He didn't wait around and sit around for years or decades about this idea. Like he came up with something and he went after it. I, like, I love that attitude. The other thing I think to remember when you're selling products, you're selling anything, sometimes it's more about how you say something than what you're saying or how you're selling something than what you're selling. So Gary was selling rocks. Nobody needs a rock. You can go outside and get a pet rock. But a bunch of people bought these pet rocks because it was funny because he packaged it in a funny way and he told funny jokes about it. He offered funny ways of training your pet rock. So there was, there's so much that can go into kind of packaging something and branding something. It's kind of like when you buy a new Apple laptop or Apple product, there's so much time and money spent in the packaging of that product. I don't think enough people spend that much time on it. A lot of people focus on kind of making a product and they just kind of slap any kind of packaging on it. Gary Dahl did to much success. He could sell a rock. Mousetrap is like a good covering. Oh, the mousetrap game? Yeah, that mousetrap game. Mouse trouble? Then you need mousetrap! Mousetrap! I guarantee you it's the craziest trap you'll ever see! I played mousetrap a couple days ago. That might be a good example. That game it doesn't really work so well. Do it. <gasps> Oh, that was so close. What do I what need do? to do? Packaged so well and what? sold so well back in the 80s. I bought it, never even played it because it didn't work right. But the marble is supposed to go down this thing like that. It's supposed to go down this. It's supposed to hit something else. It's supposed to make this jiggle, which launches another marble. There's supposed to be two marbles. Ours didn't really work out because we were missing like the second marble and the bucket and the chairs. Um, 
two front rears. Yep. But it was still fun, wasn't it? Three, two, one. If you Yay! finally did it! So that's almost like another piece of proof about all of this. Like, it's not sometimes about what you have, it's about like how you enjoy what you have. Like, you know, same thing. We, we played the game, didn't even have all the pieces, and we still had a blast playing Mousetrap, even though we didn't even get to play it the right way exactly. Mm -hmm. So we just had to drop it on the bucket. Yep. So. Still fun, right? Still a good memory. Three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> now what's it time for? Don't go to the <laughs> Posted on Reddit by a user named M underscore Aurelius. People keep telling me to get rid of my pet rock. Why? Well, I don't know exactly why. Probably because it, it doesn't, it's pretty useless. <laughs> but it has too much sedimental value. Yeah. It's the stupidest joke. It may be one of the stupidest jokes we've told on this channel. Well, That's... I'm supposed to say joke of the day. I love it. For the joke of the day! Uh. <laughs> <laughs>